Oh, precious Jesus, you were born to set me free. And may my words honor you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. A few weeks ago, I had one of those driveway moments that National Public Radio is always bragging about. It was Friday morning. I had just dropped my son off at school and was pulling into my driveway when StoryCorps came on the program. The announcer said we were about to meet an out-of-the-ordinary Santa from Atlanta named Rick Rosenthal, who had found his calling as Old Saint Nick, despite being Jewish modern orthodox, to be precise. <laughs> Mr. Rosenthal introduced himself. I was always that guy who was out in left field. Everybody felt that way. My dad, God bless him, loved that part of me. His friend, Adam Roseman, then asked, so when did you become an official Santa? Rosenthal answered, My parents died two weeks apart seven years ago. When Mom passed away, Dad just gave up. He lost his partner. And in Judaism, you don't shave for 30 days when you lose a parent or a child. So when Dad died, I said, That's it. And I let my beard grow. Rosenthal then went on to explain his evolution. That spring, I was at Home Depot, and I hear this voice. And there was this father looking over, and his son saw me and was sure I was Santa. And I walk up to him, and I put my hands on my lips, and I said, Don't tell anybody that you saw Santa buying tools for his elves at Home Depot. <laughs> Rosenthal knew then that he had found his calling. As he put it, being Santa really does make you a better person because Santa talks to children, gives them respect. He looks them in the eyes and he listens. And he treats them all the same whether they're four or 94. It's not about being an adult or child. It's about listening and providing hope. He admitted that some people think he's crazy. Then he added something interesting and unexpected. You know, he said, we don't live in a black and white world. The world is filled full of beautiful colors. Unfortunately, there are some people who see everything and everyone as black and white. But as Santa, you have to love people. You do whatever you can to help them see the colors of the world." End quote. Is this not an articulation of the gift of hope we receive each Christmas? that God imparted God's own self and substance into a baby boy born over two millennia ago so that we can see the colors of the world, so that we can see and taste our salvation. How can it be that this child is the full and complete revelation of God? The manger shouts back at us in the form of lowing and bleats and oinks and crows and braying, that God is capable of dwelling in the unlikeliest of places and in the unlikeliest of human vessels, just as this Jewish Santa from Atlanta is capable of refracting the white light of a prism into the full spectrum of a rainbow. Now, in a rational, mathematical sense, his incarnation might not quite compute. 
But perhaps we're the ones who get trapped and smothered by our own assumptions of how things should be, how holy things and holy beings should present themselves. And this is why the manger cries back at us. The world is not defined by black and white binaries. Human reason, historical and empirical truths will be upended each and every time by the only two that matter, God's truth and God's revelation. God's truth is defined and framed by four words written in the first letter of John, chapter 4, for God is love. Our revelation of God was made flesh on this earth in the tiny body of a poor Palestinian Jew whose birth announcement was made to lonely, unkempt, trembling men herding sheep. This revelation points to the emancipatory truth of Jesus' birth. It saves the dispossessed and disheartened who stand with their backs against the wall, that all of God's creation can live a fundamentally unchanged life where pain and suffering are no more, where dignity and creativity define one's existence. Howard Thurman, the 20th century African-American prophet, mystic theologian, framed his life's work around this metaphor of a wall. In his book, Jesus and the Disinherited, he quotes the first few verses of the Gospel of John. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. He quoted these verses to assure his brethren, with their backs pressed, that God was there. Thurman writes that wherever the spirit of Jesus appears, the oppressed gather fresh courage. For he announced the good news that fear, hypocrisy, and hatred, the three hounds of hell that track the trail of the disinherited, need have no dominion over them. And this is the same truth that Mary sings after she consents to bear the Son of God for all of us, to magnify the world, a God invested and revolutionary and lasting change for his creation. Mary describes a reality in which there is no unjust system, no oppressive hierarchy, no arrogant and indifferent political structure that God will not upend. No promise God will fail to keep. No broken, exploited life God will not save. Mary describes a world reordered and renewed, a world so beautifully characterized by love and justice. Only the Christ that she carries in her womb can birth it into being. Whether one's back is constantly against the wall, your paycheck isn't enough to do for your children at Christmas, the landlord knocks at your door. The policeman stops to ask you what you're doing in this neighborhood. Gang and gun violence force you to flee to a country where you're not welcome. Whether this wall is what separates you from physical or emotional liberation, life or death, Jesus stands there with you. Please know that he is there propping you up holding your hand, cushioning hard surfaces. He will make a way where there is no way. It was also Howard Thurman who said, the contradictions of life are not ultimate. Only God and Jesus the Christ, illuminated by the spectral colors of the Holy Ghost, is the ultimate. So on this night in which we gather to sing and celebrate the birth of hope incarnate, let us revel in the sentimentality of it too. Stars over snow and in the west a planet 
swinging below a star. Look for a lovely thing and you will find it. It is not far. It never will be far. Accept this gift. Accept a moment of peace when all feels right with the world. Let yourself feel the love of your neighbor. Let yourself see the people and the humanity all around you. I promise you this love is refracted through the colors of this cathedral's glorious windows. Right now, at this moment, heaven stoops down to earth to gather her children to pause for a moment of awe. With audible wonder, joy, and praise at what God has wrought. Friends, tomorrow comes. Tomorrow always comes. Let the work of Christmas begin then. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. Now change us through your love. Amen.